uh, quantitative analysis of proteins. Okay, uh, under that, uh, I will discuss with you about a uh, determination of amino acid percentage in a given food sample. Okay, for that we will use Sorensen's uh, formal titration, not formal titration. We call it as formal titration. Okay, so this is a little bit confusing, and uh, therefore please uh, understand. Uh, uh, Listen to this uh, protocol and read this protocol clearly and understand that clearly. Okay, because in here uh, we have to do about three titrations. Okay, to analyze the uh, amino acid percentage, we have to do about three titrations, and finally we we need to do a uh, calculation. Okay, so. So in this experiment, first of all, we have to prepare uh, prepare a given food or whatever the amino acid solution uh, in order to do a titration. For that, you know that uh, to, uh, for to conduct a titration, we, you need to have a uh, solution. So sometimes uh, you may provide it a uh, solid food sample or solid or, or powder like amino acid. Uh, sample. So uh, when you have given with that kind of thing, you have to first of all prepare a solution for that. So that's the initial step of this experiment, preparation of amino acid solution. So for that, uh, according to the procedure given here, you have to uh, weigh uh, about uh, 2 to 2.5 grams of the sample and you have to uh, accurately uh, record the weight because uh, if you calculate the percentage, you will need that uh, weight, okay? So uh, according to this procedure, you have to transfer it to a 100 millimeter uh, volumetric flask and volume up to the mark with distal load, okay? So, uh, So as regions or solutions in this experiment, we will use formaldehyde or formalin, uh, in generally what we call formalin uh, and sodium hydroxide, okay? So as the first titration of this experiment, you have to neutralize the formalin solution that we're going to use in this experiment, okay? Usually, Formally or formaldehyde uh, can contain some amount of formic acid. Okay, so formal formaldehyde solution can contain some amount of form formic acid. Okay, then if formic acid present in the formaldehyde solution, that will affect to our final calculation and final reading because at the end. Uh, we will do an acid-based titration. Okay, we will use uh, 0.1 sodium hydroxide as the base and uh, amino acid derivative as, a, as the acid. Okay, so if formalin contain formic acid, that will directly affect to the final reading. So we have to avoid that. Okay, therefore, first of all, we need to uh, utilize the formaldehyde solution that we're going to use. Okay, so that's the first titration we do in this experiment, in this uh, uh, Sorensen's formal titration. Okay, titration method to determine amount of percentage in a food sample or given sample. Okay. So for that, you have to take about 10 milliliters of 40% uh, four, formaldehyde solution into a small beaker, and uh, you have to add few drops of phenolphthalein as the indicator, and you have to titrate that again, 0.1 name sodium hydroxide solution to obtain neutralized formaldehyde, okay? So please understand the reason behind this, why we need to do this, okay? Because uh, if you have read this, 
protocols uh, clearly, there, there are three titrations. Okay, there are three titrations. For all the titrations, you will use sodium hydroxide in the burette and different uh, solutions in the conical flask. Okay, so uh, usually this is a little bit confusing, but uh, it's not a very complex experiment. Okay, if you understand the theory well, so you, uh, this is very simple. Okay, so this can appear in your exams, thereby please understand that. And if you have any questions, you can, uh, you are free to uh, disturb me at any time. Okay, so as the second titration or the third step of this experiment, you have to neutralize the sweeterian form of the amino acid. So what is meant by sweeterian form? What is that? I know that uh, you have learned that in your uh, theory class. What is what is what is meant by sweeterian form of the amino acid? And why we call amino acid as a sweeterian ion? Actually, amino acid uh, naturally exists in the form of sweeterian ions. Okay. What is meant by sweeterian ion? I I have seen that uh, in your theory uh, notes. It is mentioned about uh, sweeterian ion. Any ion uh, at best acid and base in solution, as which have both acidic and basic properties. So that, that's why we call uh, uh, amino acid as uh, ampoteric. We call that amino acid has uh, ampoteric properties. And what is exactly sweeterian ion? What is that? So that is a little bit different from sweeterian form, sweeterian property. Okay, you know, we know that uh, amino acid contain NH2 group as well as, or oh, amine group as well as carboxylic OH group. So amino acid can act as uh, an, a base as well as an acid. So that is the uh, amphoteric property of amino acid. So what is exactly meant by sweeterian form? Come on, you know that. Uh, one student has uh, uh, mentioned in the tab, uh, chat that does not have an aggregate charge, but industry contain positive charge and oxygen can have negative charge. Yes. So, uh, sweeterian ion or sweeterian uh, compound is any anything. Uh, which have a positive charge as well as negative char charge within the same molecule. You know that uh, uh, usually amino acid exists in the form of sweeterian or sweeterian iron form. So uh, NH2 group is exist as NH3 plus and CWOH uh, or carboxylic group exists as CWO minus. So within the amino acid molecule, it has both the positive as well as negative charge. So that's why we call that as a sweeterian ion, amino acid as a sweeterian ion. Okay. So, uh, so that's the reason why we call amino acid as, as, as a sweeterian ion. So what are the other compounds that you know uh, as sweeterian in sweeterian forms. So what can you uh, tell about the net charge of, of a sweeterian ion? Is it positive or negative? So I told you that sweeterian uh, ion is any compound which having a positive charge as well as a negative charge within the same molecule, okay? Sweeterian ion ने कहा कि लगे ना तो sweeterian form में क्या लगे ना positive charge जो कोई negative charge जो कोई तो molecule ने लगे ना तीन आ रहा okay so what can be the uh, net charge of of a sweeterian ion so what do you think about that yes net charge is zero or neutral not negative net charge is neutral in amino acid okay it has NH3 plus group or uh, 
uh, amine group usually exist as NH3 plus and CWOH group exists as CWO minus. So there's a positive charge as well as negative charge and the net charge is zero or neutral. Okay, so that's, that is the reason why we call amino acid as a suetarian ion. So what are the other suetarian forms that you know that uh, you have uh, met in your uh, chemistry? Anything, EDTA. EDTA is a suetarian, complex suetarian uh, form. Okay, so if you are interested, uh, search about that. Okay, then uh, uh, usually, as I repeatedly say, uh, so it, uh, amino acid exists in the suetarian form in naturally. So, uh, but uh, uh, we cannot do a titration when a suetarian form is uh, there. So they are, they are, thereby we have to neutralize the suetarian form of amino acid, okay? So for that, we have to uh, take out uh, 10 milliliters of the prepared amino acid solution uh, into a conical flask and you have to titrate against 0.1 in sodium hydroxide using phenolphthalein as the indicator, okay? So this is the second titration of this experiment, okay? As the first titration, you have neutralized uh, the formaldehyde solution, and as the second titration, you are going to you have to neutralize suetarian from the amino acid or the prepared amino acid solution using the uh, using against 0.1 m sodium hydroxide. Okay, so don't be confused. As I said, there are three titrations, but first one is neutralizing the formaldehyde solution, second one is neutralizing the Suetarian form of amino acid. Okay. And as the third titration or the final titration of this experiment, you have to mix the neutralized formaldehyde or formalin solution into neutralized amino acid solution. Uh, for in both solutions, you have uh, uh, you got 10 milliliters each. So you have to mix. 10 milliliters of formaldehyde neutralized formaldehyde solution uh, into uh, 10 milliliters of neutralized amino acid solution. After that, you have to titrate the combined mixture against 0.1 m sodium hydroxide. Okay, so that's the final titration. Okay, don't be confused in here. We have done, we have, we have three titrations. First one is neutralizing formaldehyde solution. Second one is neutralizing amino acid solution. Final one is uh, uh, final one is acid based titration. It is uh, a titration against the neutralized formaldehyde and neutralized amino acid mixture against uh, 0.1 m sodium hydroxide. Okay. So, uh, you, you might think that why we need to do all these things, okay? There, there, are, there are reasons for each step, okay? So at the final, in the final titration, this is an acid-based titration, and it is um, a strong acid, strong base type of a titration, okay? So what do you know about amino acid? Is it an acid or base? As it name implies, is it uh, amino acid is an acid? Okay. What can you say about is it a, a weak acid or strong acid? Amino acids are they weak acids or strong acids? Weak acid. Yes. Good. They are weak acids. So I told you that in the final titration, it it it, it will be a strong acid, strong base titration. Okay, so we did the previous titrations and finally mixing to prepare a strong acid. Okay, so when we, uh, I will uh, uh, explain that again with uh, uh, the chemical uh, equations and uh, the reactions, so you will understand that properly. So when we have uh, adding formaldehyde to amino acid, it will form 
uh, a methylene derivative of amino acid. So it is a kind of strong acid. So that in the final titration, it will be a strong acid, a strong base titration. Okay. So, okay. So I'll uh, show you the practical procedure. So after that, we can dis uh, uh, discuss more. So if you have any doubt, please understand that. As I said, this can appear in your exam. You have to do, you will sometimes do a, a calculation. So understand that properly. Okay. This experiment is to determine the percentage amino acid in a given solution. This is called the uh, Sorensen's formal titration. Okay. Uh, according to the procedure, first of all, we have prepared the uh, amino acid solution. We have already prepared the uh, amino acid solution. And uh, as the second step of this uh, experiment, we have to utilize the formaldehyde or uh, formally solution that. Uh, we have provided with okay when we are having uh, formaldehyde you know it is it has a very unpleasant order and it is a hazardous, hazardous material and therefore when you are handling formaldehyde it's better to wear a mask okay and i'm going to take uh, 10 milliliters of 14 uh, percent formaldehyde solution Okay, then uh, we have to neutralize the formaldehyde solution against 0 0.1 in sodium hydroxide. And in this titration, we are going to use uh, phenolphthalein as the indicator. Uh, at that point, uh, you will observe the pain in the sun. Okay. Here you can see uh, a pain in the sun. Okay. Uh, as the uh, third major step of this uh, experiment, we have to neutralize the prepared amino acid solution. That also 
Uh, I'm going to take uh, 10 milliliters of the prepared hormone acid solution into a conical flask. And uh, I will titrate this against 0 0.1 in sodium hydroxide using as the phenolphthalein uh, as the indicator. Okay, in this titration, usually we will require only few drops of sodium hydroxide. Okay, you can see a faint pink color. Okay, then uh, here we have the nucleus for many high solution with me and the nucleus amino acid solution. Okay, then uh, As the next step of this titration, uh, we have to mix the neutralized amino acid with the neutralized formaldehyde solution. Then uh, we have a combination of amino acid and Okay, then uh, as the major titration of this experiment, then we are going to titrate this mixture against 0 0.18 sodium hydroxide. Actually, this is a uh, strong acid, strong base titration. We, we are doing all the steps in order to prepare for strong acid. Okay, then soiterium form of the amino acid is a hydrophysical acid.
So now we're going to the problem. So you can see a persistent pink color. Okay, see at the uh, end point, the pink color should not disappear. Okay, you will know how to get the uh, constant pink color at the end point. Okay. So this is the uh, occurrences from the time tension when we are doing the this experiment. When we are doing this experiment, we should be able to at least uh, duplicate the uh, procedure. Okay. You can see when I add in uh, more sodium hydroxide, the pink color will get concentrated, but uh, it has exceeded the end point. Okay, and uh, one might think that uh, I haven't uh, add uh, indicator at the carbide engine, but uh, in the uh, previous step, I have added uh, already pink color. Therefore, at the uh, end situation, no need to add uh, again the indicator. Okay, so uh, this is the first titration in this experiment. Uh, uh, we do neutralize formaldehyde uh, using sodium hydroxide. Okay, so you know that uh, this is formaldehyde, and what is what is the speciality of formaldehyde? What do you know about formaldehyde? Or formalin, what we what we call? That's a speciality of formaldehyde. What is the systematic name of formaldehyde? Is it a aldehyde or ketone at least? Uh, it is used to preserve dead bodies. It is, it is an uh, aldehyde as well as it is the uh, simplest aldehyde we know. And systematic name of uh, formaldehyde is uh, methanol. Okay, so uh, if you talk more about formaldehyde, it is a hazardous material as well as uh, highly volatile, and uh, it is a non carcinogen for human. Thereby, when we uh, handle formaldehyde, you, you must be very careful. And uh, when you are doing this experiment, you have to uh, wear a mask. As well as uh, uh, when you uh, handle it for head, always you have to keep that uh, closed. Okay, uh, when you uh, get in that uh, into a beaker, you have to at least close that using a uh, poch glass. Okay, so inhaling uh, can uh, cause harm to you. Okay, as well as uh, uh, it is a non carcinogen for human. Thereby, thereby you have to be very careful. Okay, so I, I explained that in the video also. Uh, formaldehyde can uh, react with atmospheric oxygen and further oxidize into formic acid. Okay, even though we, we here we use a 40% formaldehyde solution, that is a high concentrated formaldehyde. And uh, even though uh, that kind of uh, commercial formaldehyde solution, about uh, 10 to 12 percent of formic acid can be there because uh, we cannot avoid the uh, uh, reaction of formaldehyde with atmospheric oxygen. So when we open, it can react. So it can oxidize into formic acid. So problem with formic acid is that uh, the final titration will be an acid-based acid titration. And if there's formic acid, so it will again react with so sodium hydroxide and the end point will be errors. Okay, the end point uh, will be slightly higher, slightly, slightly. It can be higher than the actual 
uh, endpoint. Thereby, we have to neutralize the formaldehyde solution. It means uh, if there's formic acid, we have to neutralize that. Okay, so that's what we do in the first iteration. Okay, so do you have any questions regarding this one? We are using formaldehyde solution, but in formaldehyde solution, it can be formic acid. So if formic acid present in the solution, that can affect, affect to the final titration. Thereby, we have to neutralize the formic acid. Okay, for that, we do, we do the titration making sodium hydroxide. And when, if there's formic acid in the formaldehyde solution, that is quite obvious, usually, in every commercial formaldehyde solution, formic acid can be there. So we neutralize that. Okay, so that's the first iteration. If you have any questions, please ask. So I will, I will go step by step. Uh, then I will move on to the second iteration. That is the neutralization of the sweetarian form of amino acid. Okay, so you know this is this is this is uh, an amino acid. So it contains uh, amino amine group and as well as carboxylic group. So usually amino acids, acids exist in the uh, as this sweetarian form. It means uh, in the same molecule, it contains positive charge as well as negative charge, and the net charge is zero. Okay. So when sweetarian, sweetarian form is there, we cannot uh, do a proper titration. Okay. So we have to neutralize the sweetarian form. Okay, for that, we do the second neutralization, the second titration in sodium hydroxide to neutralize the sweetarian form of amino acid. Okay, so usually for this titration, it will consume about only few drops of sodium hydroxide. Okay, the, the volume will be very less. Thereby, uh, when you're doing the second titration, you have to be very careful. Usually, it will uh, take uh, only few drops. Okay. So that's the second titration. Okay. So one might think that uh, why we can't to uh, consider this titration as the final titration. In here, we we are supposed to, we are intended to determine the amino acid percentage. So why why we why we can't use this only this? The problem is, as I said, amino acids are very weak acids. Usually, pH is about uh, 7 to 7.4, uh, likewise. And uh, sodium hydroxide is a kind of a, a strong base. And uh, the volume consumed for this titration will be very less, usually, uh, very few drops of sodium hydroxide. Thereby, the accuracy of titration is minimum, as well as uh, even though we intended to uh, react sodium hydroxide with C double OH group, carboxylic group, see this amino group can interfere with that. Okay, it can act with, uh, react with sodium hydroxide and form other compounds. Thereby, we have to block amine group. So that's what, uh, that's one uh, objective of uh, reacting uh, neutralize amino acid with uh, formaldehyde. Okay, so we basically uh, we we cannot do this titration as the final titration. You have to understand that there are limitations of using that. Okay, so there, this is the second titration, and uh, as the final titration. Uh, before doing the final titration, we do the mixing of neutralized amino acid to neutralized formaldehyde solution. So it can form this kind of methylene der uh, derivated amino acid. So this is the methylene derivated amino acid, and this is a strong acid. Okay. So when we mix in neutralized formaldehyde into neutralized amino acid, it in the mixture, it can be, uh, it can form methylene derivated 
amino acid. Okay, so this is a strong acid. So in the final titration, uh, the mixture is titrated against sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base, strong acid kind of titration. So that's the uh, reactions of Sorensen's formal titration. Okay, so here you, you can see uh, amino, uh, amine group has been blocked by a uh, formaldehyde and it formed a uh, uh, double bond. And amine group uh, will not affect to the uh, reaction between carboxylic group and sodium hydroxide. Okay, as well as this is a strong acid. Okay, so so that's the re that's why we form this strong acid for this titration. Okay, so this is a kind of a strong acid, strong base titration. Okay, so do you have any questions regarding this? So that's the that's what happening in the for instance, formal titration. So this uh, method was intended in the early uh, 90s, it means uh, about uh, more than 100 years ago. And still uh, the principle uh, can be used to determine amino acid concentration in a solution, okay? So it was invented by uh, Sorensen. So that's why we call it as a Sorensen's formal titration. Okay. So do you have any questions? So uh, color change of each, each titration. What, what can be the color change? So we, we use phenolphthalein. So it will be uh, colorless to pink color in all the three titrations. Okay. So in the all of the titrations, we use sodium hydroxide in the unit and uh, different uh, solutions in the conical class. Please uh, 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 go through these reactions and uh, see what do you have any questions. Then uh, one, one has uh, asked that uh, what, is, what is the uh, end point of the second titration. So that's also. Uh, turning uh, colorless uh, solution into persistent or pink color. Okay, why why is that? Uh, because uh, when the when this is neutralized uh, and uh, the, the after neutralizing the next point of sodium hydroxide can impart uh, uh, can impart phenolphthalein into uh, pink. Okay. So that is basic. Okay. Okay. Then uh, you then you can do do the do the titration. Uh, sorry, uh, the calculation. Okay. So I ask, I request you to take your uh, calculators and uh, piece of paper, and uh, you have to do, uh, 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 produce a practical report, report for this. Uh, practical also, so I will upload the particulars, uh, the guidelines, and other things in, in the LMS. And uh, as I promised, you can uh, submit that after your exam. If you wish, you can submit uh, before that. Okay, so so uh, note this. A student wanted to determine uh, how does a methylene derivative amino acid act as a uh, strong acid. That because of double bond of nitrogen and carbon. Yes. This uh, methylene derivated amino acid uh, can uh, act as a strong acid because uh, in here the pre uh, predominant group is a double OH. Okay. So this uh, the, the the compound effect of See this uh, double uh, bond uh, can uh, can uh, lead to uh, uh, to uh, predominate this C double OH group. Okay, 
is there any possibility to mixture uh, of neutralized formalin and neutralized amino acid get ink before final titration no why is that uh, what is the color change of phenolphthalein what is the color of phenolphthalein in a acidic medium amlic uh ගාවන එක නැත්නම් ආම්ලික මාධ්‍යයේදී පිනොක්තලින් වල කලර් කලර් චේන්ජ් එක මොකද්ද කලර් එක මොකද්ද ආම්ලික මාධ්‍යයේදී පිනොක්තලින් පිනොක්තලින් වල කලර් එක කලර්ලස් බාෂ්මික මාධ්‍යයේදී තමයි ඒක පින්ක් කලර් වෙන්නේ නැත්නම් රෝස් පාට වෙන්නේ එතකොට අපි නියුට්‍රලයිස් ෆෝමලින් සහ නියුට්‍රලයිස් අමිනෝ ඇසිඩ් එකතු කරාට පස්සේ එතන හැදෙන්නේ ස්ට්‍රොන්ග් ඇසිඩ් එක ඩෙෆිනිට්ලි there will be no color change it means it uh, the color no color change means that the, uh, it will not get pink before the final titration clear is that clear since it yes. is a, a strong acid it will not turn into pink before the titration and uh, as well we need we uh, no need to add uh, phenolphthalein for the final titration because phenolphthalein is already there okay clear is that clear for you yes sir thank you sir okay then likewise if you have any questions please ask at any time okay so a student have you learned about isometric point and uh, pka values so if you learned that i can explain that why this act as a strong acid act actually that's not proper science when pka value is higher in uh, uh, amino acid the predominant group will be carboxylic so that's what we do in this in here okay so okay so uh, uh please note note down this we have to do, 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 do this calculation a student wanted to determine the glycine amino acid percentage of an impure glycine sample using sorensen's formal titration this is not formal titration formal titration i have seen that uh, i come to uh, correct that in your handout also this is called sorensen's formal titration i don't know what is meant by formal i have went through few dictionaries and i, I couldn't able to find the meaning of formal but uh, this is in chemistry books it is mentioned as formal titration or not formal titration okay so he measured 2.0276 grams of the given sample and prepared the Uh, 100 mm solution with distilled water in a volumetric flask okay determine glass in amino acid percentage of the given sample using following information so please note down he measured this uh, weight and he prepared a uh, 100 mm solution using that okay as i said i i don't know what you are doing in your house in your place but uh, i request you to do this calculation that this definitely will help you okay don't uh push your works to do later okay so i will give you the uh, bure readings okay he has taken accurately 10 ml of the prepared solution that means a monosit solution and uh, 10 ml of formaldehyde for the first second and third trials as mentioned in the protocol and the molecular weight of glycine is uh, 75.07 g per mole and you know glycine is the simplest simplest amino acid we know okay so then let me ask one question from you so is this a uh, uh, an aliphatic amino acid or an aromatic amino acid so that what do you what do you know yes aliphatic this is a kind of aliphatic amino acid because there is no aromatic rings so as r groups it contain h hydrogen so that's the simplest amino acid okay so that's other thing Okay, so he has uh, according to the procedure, he has taken accurately ten milliliters of the prepared solution and ten milliliters of the formaldehyde for the first, second, and third trials. He has uh, duplicated the uh, titrations. He has done 
titrations about three times. Okay, so these are the readings. He has done three tiles, trial one, trial two, and trial three. And here you can see the titration readings for each trials. So this seems to be a little bit uh, confusing and complex, but uh, you will understand that it is not. Okay, so in this method, you need to do three titrations, three different titrations. First titration is to neutralize, neutralize the formaldehyde solution. Second titration is to neutralize sweetening form of the amino acid. And the third titration is the titration of amino acid versus sodium hydroxide. Okay. I request you to uh, note down these values. Just put a table and note down. Okay, then uh, understand the understand the calculation very carefully. So, uh, do we need the uh, burette readings or the readings of the first and second titrations to calculate uh, amino acid uh, amount? Actually, these two titrations are done to uh, neutralize the solutions. So, for the calculation, we 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 will not require the titration readings of the first and second titration. It means the neutralization of formalin solution and neutralization of sodium from the amino acid. So, what we need is the titration readings of the third titrations for the final titration. So, the titrations with the Strong acid, it means a methylene derivative amino acid versus sodium hydroxide. Okay, so I will move back to the equations reaction. So you can see, so uh, in the burette, we have taken sodium hydroxide. So when we know the amount consumed for this titration, we can calculate, we know the uh, sodium hydroxide moles consumed to react with strong acid. It means the methylene derivative acid, amino acid. So when we know sodium hydroxide mole, according to the stoichiometry, what is the stoichiometry between sodium hydroxide and uh, methylene derivative amino acid? What is the stoichiometry? One to one. Okay. So, so that's one to one. Okay, then uh, the twin, the, the, the uh, when we know the methylene derivated amino, the moles of methylene derivated amino acid, it, it equal to the uh, moles of amino acid because uh, the, here this is also methylene derivated experiment between neutralized amino acid and the methylene derivated amino acid is one to one, and this uh, sweetened form of amino acid or the natural existing form of amino acid and the Utilized form of amino acid, the stoichiometry is one to one. Okay, so finally, when we know the uh, methylene moles of methylene derivative amino acid, we know the moles of amino acid. Okay, is that clear? This is one to one. This is one to one, as well as the, uh, this is one to one. Okay, when we know sodium hydroxide, we know that we can uh, uh, take. The sodium hydroxide volume consumed for the titration using the burette reading. From that, we know that uh, the concentration of sodium hydroxide we used is 0 0.1 m. So from, from that, we can calculate sodium hydroxide moles consumed for the titration. And uh, so since the stoichiometry is one to one, this amount is similar to that moles. Okay, so that if the this amount is uh, we know, then we know the amino acid moles. So from that, we know the molecular weight of amino acids. From that, we can calculate. Okay. So if you don't, don't know this, uh, how to calculate this, you will be in a big trouble because uh, I can provide you uh, three titration readings and confuse you. Then confuse you in the exam, then you know you, you don't know if you if you will not know uh, how to use these readings, then definitely you will be in a trouble. Okay. 
first and second titration readings are not required for the titration, for the calculation. Okay, so what we require is the third titration. Actually, first and second titrations are done to neutralize the solutions. So one means to neutralize the formaldehyde and second one is to neutralize the suited in form. And then we mix the neutralized formaldehyde and the neutralized suited in form of amino acid. So then we do the this combination against sodium hydroxide. So that is what we need. Okay. So, so please calculate with me for the first trial amount of 0 0.1 m sodium hydroxide so, sodium hydroxide used for the amino used for the amino acid. It means the methylene derivated amino acid. We can calculate that the burette rating was 21.5 So what is the uh, amount of so sodium hydroxide? So, so this is the amount of sodium hydroxide used for the final titration or used for the uh, amino acid. So therefore, amount of amino acid present in 10 milliliters of the prepared solution, we have taken 10 milliliters of amino acid. So we know that amount. It is similar to that. Okay. So from the sample of uh, uh, sample we taken, we prepared a 100 millimeter solution, okay? So when we know the amount of amino acid in, in a 10 milliliter solution, we can calculate the total amino acid present in the given sample, okay? We have prepared a 100 milliliter solution from that. From that solution, we take, we took, 10 milliliters and do the titration, did the titration. Okay, so we can calculate that. So that's this amount. Okay, when we know the amino acid moles in the prepared solution, that means uh, 100 millimeters of the prepared uh, solution. So we can calculate mass of glycine amino acid in the sum. So we know the molecular weight of glycine, and if we multiply that with the moles, we can calculate the uh, mass of plasma. What is the answer for this? Okay, check with the check with this. Yes, that is uh, one point six one four two. So when we know the mass of glycine amino acid in the sample, we can give it as a percentage because we know the Glycine amino acid percentage uh, to calculate that we know the initial amount or initial weight we took for this experiment. So, so what is the final answer for this? Yes, the answer is seventy nine point six one. Okay. So, is that finished with the calculation? No, we have done three trials. We have to do this calculation for other two trials also, and you have to take the average of this value. Okay. We have to take the average of that value. Okay. So uh, let me ask that. Then uh, is it correct to take average of this third titration readings and do the calculation. Is it correct? What do you think? Okay, to main titration readings so the average of the calculation is correct. Yes, definitely no. Because the, there can be different volumes. So in here, I mentioned that uh, we have, she has uh, taken accurately 10 milliliters of the prepared solution and the 10 milliliters of the formaldehyde solution for the first, second and third trials, but uh, the volumes can be different, at least uh, for uh, when we uh, take 10.10 uh, amino acid, so, so that uh, the unit reading is different, will be different from others. So if, since I have mentioned that all the uh, things are uh, very similar, so you can take the average. But uh, in this kind of titration, it is I, I never recommend you to uh, 
take the average. You have to do the correct way. Even though it is a, a little bit longer than the normal procedure that you have uh, practiced with, but it is the correct one. Okay, so in the exam, uh, I can just uh, confuse you by giving uh, that uh, she ha he has taken 10.0 in the first trial and 10.10 in the second trial. Okay, then if you uh, if you if you will get the average, then that the calculation will be totally wrong. Okay, since uh, here I mentioned that all the uh, the volumes T2. Uh, exactly 10.00, that's okay to take the average, but uh, always it's not going to be, okay? So with that, okay, then then uh, can you calculate the uh, amino acid percentage for the second trial? Mama, that are the end of the mine. So I have a chemistry background and I have worked in the uh, University of Peradine. OLS University, Open University, as well as, as well as Radio University. So I have worked with many students like you. Even though I'm a young, I'm a young, I'm a young academic. I have, I think I have experience in chemical sciences uh, teaching. So I have seen that uh, uh, you practice in that uh, taking average of the final uh, titrations and do the calculation. Okay, if you know the proper chemistry, that's totally correct, incorrect. Okay, uh, you have to uh, calculate the things in the first, say, say, if you are duplicating a procedure, you have to do the calculation for each trial and you have to take the final average. That's the correct practice. Okay, in uh, this case, let me uh, explain why. Small ratio percentage calculation method calculation Amino acid solution again 10.00. Procedure get in 10 milliliters run the kill. Palavini trial like the 10 gatta. Namutha bit devini trial like the upita 10 haridam gun the value. Upita gun the upita 10.10. Okay. Upita 10.10 gatta now. Itta gotta Palavini trial like the uh, Vivana sodium hydroxide pramane, I say when you try like the Vivana sodium hydroxide pramane, some are no in the food. Hey, Methanadi, Palavin try like the Vivana 10.0 neutralized and Vivana sodium hydroxide pramane, they will try like the Apida Gandapurang uh, 10.10 Vivana sodium hydro uh, new, uh, and 10.10 is the pet now shown sodium hydroxide from R. Okay. So uh, so this readings is not uh, in the same level. It means uh, uh, we cannot take average here. So in when you are doing the calculation, so you take the so, uh, amount of sodium hydroxide used for the amino acid, and from that. You are going to take so so you in, in here you the calculation you calculate that uh, amino acid present in 10 milliliters of the prepared solution so for for the first trial it is correct so in the second trial you have taken 10.10 so accordingly you have to change this trial make a hurry now they will try to take a where the 10 milliliters that the Hindu Palavin trial like to make a hurry. The only trial like the Vulgata man was ten point one zero. It took a better up at a better Yanu in a swing ten point one zero will at the my may promote the Venus even a picture. Okay. So a young work make calculation to Venus ten point one zero picture. I now see it a picture. 
එතකොට මේ මෝල් ප්‍රමාණය වෙනස් වෙනවා එතකොට මේ වෙයිට් එක වෙනස් වෙනවා එතකොට මේ පර්සන්ටේජ් එක වෙනස් වෙනවා එතකොට හොඳම දේ තමයි මේ ෆයිල්ස් වලට වෙන වෙනම කැල්කියුලේට් කරලා ोल्यूशन First, second, and third trials. Okay. So even though he has taken uh, accurately, very accurately, all the uh, volumes, there can be personal errors. That's why these readings are different from each other. Okay. So that's that's that that can happen. We are not robots. We are human. Okay. So depend on the person who is conducting the titration and the. Uh, way he handled the view rate and uh, depending on the environmental conditions and the accuracy of uh, instruments so this uh, readings can vary that's okay that's totally okay okay so that's why these readings are different okay so when you are doing the uh, doing a titration or doing a chemical analysis this kind of variations can be happen and they are allowed okay make ham uh, hamoelam titration rate is 21.50 50 50 enona godak hondai namuth saamanya gehu wenne even uh, if, if you are a good chemist uh, by reading a uh, titration or the whatever the chemical analysis readings you can see that uh, this is uh, this has done correctly or this has uh, falsified or this has uh, manipulated okay so i request be honest and never do this kind of cheating okay and not only in chemical analysis but also also in your life okay so if you if you practice chemistry that will uh you will learn that okay so so that's the reason for that is that clear miss is that clear or i can explain that again yes sir all clear thank you okay so so you have to do the uh, calculation for the second trial as well as the third trial and you can take the average okay okay so that's it for the that's the things i wanted to discuss about titration so enzymes form a titration okay so this is since this is the last class i will perfectly summarize what we have learned so far okay so uh, let me do that and also i will um, upload the our uh, practical recordings to youtube and uh, give you the links okay so uh, before that uh, do you have any questions regarding this the so enzymes form a titration please understand this very carefully and clearly mono hari prashna thiyana nahana thana me kattitama godak kati uwanna na godak igena ramura lisila yana thana me kahariyata thenu karunna ekthama ek karanna bae pahalu ko deyak nemi namuth mandanna godak kattiyata samahara yana me patla wenna puluwa Okay, so if you do not have any questions, I will quickly go through what we have discussed so far. So under the biochemistry practical series, so I have included a code. I designed this uh, procedure. Uh, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well. Yeah, it is. Uh, so one one has uh, posed the question that uh, will uh, will the time be enough for doing calculation in such method for getting more accurate value in the exam no definitely no uh the first thing is uh, if you are doing uh, 
uh, if you will have to face the online examination, definitely you will be you will be having one hour or half an hour. And if you practice that in the uh, our laboratories, definitely for this exam you will uh, we will give about three hours to conduct the experiments. Okay, you have to do all the experiments, and we will provide individually all the equipments and all the chemicals for you. And you have to practice the uh, things and record the values within three hours. Okay, so within three hours you can manage somehow. But uh, uh, in online examinations, uh, there will be very tricky points. Okay, then uh, sometimes, as I mentioned, if I say that. Uh, uh, the uh, analyze uh, analyzer. He has taken accurately ten milliliters of uh, each solutions for the, the all the third, the third trials. Then you you don't need to uh, do individually do calculation for each trial, and then you can uh, get the average and do the calculation. That's okay, but uh, we have to. Uh, Only you have to understand the question well, okay. So before we are giving you uh, questions, usually we uh, do uh, moderating the questions and uh, scrutinizing the questions, and uh, that will be uh, assessed by a panel. And individually, uh, uh, personally, I do the calculation by my hand and see if at the time is enough. Okay, there yeah, there will be uh, will not uh, affect. Uh, Very much for you. So, if you know the uh, principle, you can apply that. If you don't know, then you will, you will be in a trouble. That's that's the normal procedure. Okay. So, if you are if you can't explain it simply, that means you don't understand it well enough. Okay. So, I I explained. I think I have explained you everything that I supposed to talk with you in this. Practical things. First of all, we we discussed about disciplinary guidelines and personal safety and laboratory safety in the very first lecture. And then uh, I moved on to uh, qualitative analysis of carbohydrates. Under that, uh, first we talked uh, talked about uh, MOS test. is a kind of simple test to identify reducing sugars and uh, molis test this is a this is a very uh, specific test that is to identify any carbohydrates especially monosaccharides disaccharides and, uh, as well as polysaccharides will give positive results for molis test that means a purple coloring and uh, then we moved or uh, discussed about failing test that is a uh, well known test To identify reducing sugars, distinguish between reducing and non-reducing sugars. For that, we use a Fehling's A and Fehling's B solutions. So Fehling's A contain copper sulfate, which is in a blue color, and Fehling's B contain uh, sodium potassium tartrate and sodium hydroxide. When we mix Fehling's A and Fehling's B, we will get a Persian blue color solution. Okay. So. So when uh, reducing sugars are there, you will observe a dictated precipitate in the failing test. That is the Q plus oxide. Okay. Then we talk discuss about uh, also a test that is that is also a very specific test. Using this test, we can identify the type of reducing sugar. Okay, depending on the uh, time taken to form the crystals as well as the uh, structure of crystals, we can. Uh, identify the type of reducing sugars. Okay, so I explain that uh, glucose and fructose will have needle shaped appearance, and so uh, uh, lactose and maltose, powder shapes and star shaped uh, uh, crystals can can be formed. And depending on that, we can identify the type of reducing sugar. Okay, so that's ozone test. Even uh, in exams, we have performed this ozone test also. In uh, in class uh, examinations, okay. And Barford test, we we have we can use this test to uh, distinguish between 
reduce the monosaccharides and reduce the disaccharides. Reducing monosaccharides will give positive results within a short period of time, but reducing disaccharides will, will get a longer time to give results for this buffer test. Then, uh, based on that property, we can distinguish between reducing monosaccharides and reducing disaccharides. Okay, then I uh, discuss with you about Roman's test. This is also a very simple test to distinguish reducing sugars and uh, non reducing sugars. And then we moved on to identification test for polysaccharide. In here, we tested the solubility of starch in cold water and hot water. And then we uh, conducted iodine test, that is a test to uh, identify the presence of starch. And when the starch is uh, uh, in the in the solution, so we can see a blue back uh, complex. Okay, so yes, so that's the uh, test to identify the presence of starch, partic particularly. Then uh, we tested hydrosis of starch, uh, 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 specifically about acid hydrosis of starch. In here, we tested. What happened when hydrolyzed starch? There will be different intermediate products, and we tested that for failing test as well as starch uh, ID test. Okay, and then we uh, discussed about uh, quantitative analysis of carbohydrates, and we estimate the glucose percentage using the uh, principle of failing test. Okay, so this uh, this is uh, a kind of titration. And we here in here we used uh, heated conditions, and we used methylene blue indicator uh, to recognize the endpoint. And here, methylene blue indicator was not used as a, as an uh, acid base indicator. Uh, there's a specific redox reaction, and based on that property, it can use as the it can use use as a indicator here. Okay. So using the conversion factor, uh, using this uh, Lane and Hyden method, we can calculate the glucose percentage in a given sample. So then we talked about qualitative analysis of fats and oils, basically lipids. Then we tested solubility of uh, fats and oil, and then the emulsification properties of fats and oil. Okay. Then. Uh, under uh, quantitative analysis of fats and oil, we determine acid value of a, a given coconut sample. And I, I told you that uh, with time, oils can get trans transitified and the free fatty acids content can be increased. And uh, uh, determining the acid value is, a, is used as a quality assurance measure or quality measure of edible lipids. Okay. So we calculated uh, acid value. So after that, we moved on to qualitative analysis of proteins. Under that, we first of all, we uh, prepared uh, protein samples for the analysis. For that, we used gelatin, egg albumin, casein, and peptone. I, I said that uh, gelatin and peptone are synthetic proteins, while egg, egg albumin and casein are uh, natural proteins. So we uh, did the coagulation test for that. Uh, uh, albumin and uh, casein uh, get coagulated uh, when boiling, but uh, peptone and gelatin uh, did, didn't give such coagulation. And uh, yeah, but all the proteins we tested gave a precipitate or denatured with heavy metals and the heavy metal uh, uh, ions like the mercury, acid nitrate, and lead acetate. Okay, then uh, uh, we discussed about bioweight test. It is a, a well known test to identify the presence of proteins. Bioweight uh, reaction that means the uh, forming purple color solution by uh, CO2 plus. Uh, can happen when there's presence of peptide bonds or peptide-like bonds. Okay, so 
so there's a limitation of biorate test is that uh, uh, urea like things can form biorate and uh, it can give positive results for biorate reaction okay then xanthoprotein test xanthoprotein test will give orange deep orange color uh, solution when there is a aliphatic sorry aromatic uh, amino acids okay in the protein or in the amino acid solution when there is uh, aromatic amino acid like uh, tyrosine tryptophan and uh, phenylalanine it can give positive results for xanthoprotein reaction so sulfur reaction that is basically to identify amino acids which have sulfur particularly which have terminal sulfur group so there's a uh, difference between methyl and cysteine one has a terminal sulfur group so we can identify that amino acid using sulfur reaction okay then here uh, you will observe a uh, black uh, precipitate that is red sulfide okay if you need to under you need to assure that it is red sulfide we can what we can do is we can add a uh, few amounts of hcl then it will disappear the precipitate will be uh, uh, removed okay then we discussed about quantitative analysis of proteins under that we discussed about so instance formal titration okay so so do you have any questions in this and uh, what can i do for you no if you have anything to clarify this is the time you can ask it i will i have to uh, do the cut and uh, the, the finishing in my this practical discussions and uh, after that i will upload the recordings to lms lm not lms we got i can't do that because this is this files are very high uh, only so i i will upload to my youtube channel and give you the link okay and then i i did my best uh, with with my available resources and uh, the time i have so i think i have done my best like i have to give uh, credits to uh, dr mankarshini well as our demonstrated demonstrators who have been me to for this course okay so i think uh, this, this will be our last meeting i will not teach you any courses uh, for you and i will not uh, here at this university for a long period of time and uh, i don't think we will meet again in uh, any case so if if everything uh, will go goes uh, as it as it is so that will happen okay then uh, so so i know that uh, some people you know some few people have very interest are uh, very interested in chemistry so so i i can understand that i know that uh, in every batch there are right? some students who are particularly interested in chemistry so uh, if you are interested keep that up and uh, if you if you if you have other courses uh, in like uh, history of chemistry they have degree programs for uh, chemistry if you, i know that some students are parallelly doing the degrees so i don't know uh, if you have time search about those courses also so that that will help you and since so this is the last time we will we meet i say and and you are uh, from first year students you are first year students so i tell you that uh, i need to give some advice for you as a uh, young academic <clears throat> do you work well and always be truthful uh, don't cheat in your exams as well as in your life uh, life and the this world as and the societies never as we uh, expected <laughs>